Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In the last video, I talked about batched writes. So we created a function here, change name, that changes the first and the last name of a particular person in our Firestore database. And it only changed those um, first and last names if both of these operations succeeded. So if, for example, the first name operation failed and the last name operation succeeded, then both won't be executed because we put those into that run batch block. But as the name batch write says, that is only possible for write operations. Once we also need to read from our Firestore database, then we need to use transactions. So on the one hand, transactions will allow us to combine different read and write operations. And on the other hand, they will handle the concurrency of that. So that means if there are several clients that want to change the same value in your database, and let's say client one increments it by one and client two increments it also by one, then if client one gets the current value of the field and right in that moment, client two will increment the value by one, then normally client one will update the value with his local new value. But by using a transaction, we actually make sure that this can't happen because the transaction will actually be executed again if it checks that there was also another client who changed the value. So make sure to extend your layout like I did with that do transaction button. You can also find this layout XML file in this video's description, of course, as usual. And after that, I want to create a function called birthday that just increments the age of a particular person by one. I will create this function right on top of this change name function that will also be a private function, um, birthday, and it will take the person ID, so the ID of the document of the person we want to change, and we will also launch a coroutine in the IO dispatcher just as usual. Dispatcher.io, of course, dot launch. And in here, we open a try and catch block, just as we did it for the change name function. We can actually copy the catch block here and simply paste it because it is exactly the same. But in the try block, we actually want to write something different. But that is also very intuitively because in the change name function, we called Firebase faster dot run batch. And this time that is just Firebase dot firestar dot run transaction and open that lambda block here and i will give this parameter of that lambda function also a name which is transaction for better readability and inside of this transaction block here we can do exactly the same as we could do with the run batch block just with the difference that we can also get data from our database so we will also do that in the beginning now because we want to get the current age of our person then we want to increment that age and update the current age of our person in our database. So what we do here is just exactly the same as in the run batch block. We need to create our person reference. So the reference to the document of our person, we can get that by writing person collection reference dot document and pass our person ID. And after that, we can get the current person so the object we can actually get the the properties from our person from so we have access to the fields of that document we can get that by writing transaction dot get and here we need to pass the document reference we created above here so we pass our person reference and now we can see that person is now a document snapshot and with a document snapshot we can always directly access the fields of that person. So we can get the age of that person and increment it by one and save that in the new age variable here. So val new age is equal to person and we want to access the field age of that person. And since Android Studio doesn't know yet what kind of data type that age is, we also need to cast that to its corresponding data type and Firestore saves its numbers as a long. So we need to cast that as a long here and then we can increment it by one. And right after that, we can call our transaction dot update and pass our person reference because we want to update the person inside of this reference. We want to update the field age and we want to update it with the value new age. And then we can simply return null inside of this lambda function, which just means that this transaction was successful. And since we're inside of a coroutine scope here, we can also call that await afterwards 
to make this one transaction block suspendable. So if we now scroll up and add an on click listener to our transaction button, button transaction dot set on click listener. And here we want to call birthday with the person ID that I copy from here, paste it here. And that is actually it. We can run our app and try out if everything is working. Take a look in our Firebase console, open the app and you can see that is the ID that I want to change here. That person is currently 60 years old. And if I now click on do transaction, then you can see the age is properly incremented by one. And that works several times, of course. So if there now would be several of these apps that all hit the do transaction button, then it couldn't happen that some of these incrementations are lost due to the problem I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So yeah, I hope this video helped you to understand transactions. If so, please let me know in the comments. And also if you have any questions, then really don't mind asking them below. And if there is anything I can improve on, please let me know that too. That would be really helpful for me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.